Dream Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So many of you have actually asked me to make a second video about enchantment and that is for the accessory side of things because the first video when I made it, they haven't allowed enchantment on accessories. So this video is going to address all of that. But before that, I'm just going to show you guys this particular image and that is the rates okay, and the chance of obtaining certain attributes, certain substats for the weapons, helmets, armor, gloves and boots, basically all your equipment. So what is different for the accessories and exclusive equipment equipment is that you can actually get almost all the attributes unlike the various weapon parts where certain substats are excluded but for the accessory side of things you can actually get most and for exclusive equipment you can get all okay, any possible substat that exists in the game for the earring necklace and ring there will be two substats that are excluded and that is pertaining to your basic stats and for those three in particular getting the attack speed substat is particularly low okay i think it's deliberate that you do not get a very high chance to get attack speed because it is so so important in pvp okay so if you do have an attack speed role um, i would suggest keeping it until you get a better attack speed role okay even if it's a low one so just get attack speed for now okay uh, and then try to reroll for a better stat unless the hero that you're equipping this particular accessory to doesn't need attack speed then by all means and that is something that we will talk about later so i just need you guys to take note that for the rearing neck and ring for the attack defense and hp substat for each of them there will be a much bigger range and much higher maximum that you can obtain those particular substats in so i think if you have a very high attack stat on the ring for example you should try to keep it because it is quite rare in that case unless again the hero doesn't really need attack then okay forget it right and for exclusive equipment i would like to take your attention to all the attack related attributes okay they are all halved take note of that so if you have an exclusive equipment for example meant for a defensive hero for example rudy and you do get you know some uh, attack related roles they may not be the most ideal for rudy because the defensive related attributes have a higher maximum value so unless you're very sure that this particular exclusive equipment is going to be rotated around several damage dealers otherwise i think for exclusive equipment wise it is better to go with defensive substats because they simply have a higher maximum value okay rather than going for the lower attack substat which has been nerfed on the exclusive equipment itself so just take note of this particular fun fact uh, that i came across and i had to highlight to you guys okay so the thing about this varying percentages of obtaining certain substats is actually not the same as in korea now if you look at the korean substats i mentioned this in the first video as well they are all even throughout except for the earring necklace and ring okay but the rest are pretty much all even throughout so i think global kind of got a shaft here unfortunately because it's harder to get the attack stat and the attack speed substat on various equipment so i'm not too sure why that is i'm not too sure if they're going to change it but this is the information obtained from the global side of things okay so what substats do you need or should you be giving your various pieces of equipment too i do have to explain uh, this in terms of hero role as well but take note that this is a very very general guideline because because ultimately what substats rolled on certain pieces of accessories and then given to various heroes is really hero dependent and meta dependent sometimes you may use certain accessories on certain heroes because it is favored in that period of time in the meta sometimes you are using certain heroes and they do require certain accessories because of their role okay and of course it depends on how many of the accessories you have and for newer players i'm sure that you don't have many so you have to be rotating uh, these accessories across various heroes and various users so telling you a specific substat to have for a particular hero is not going to be how this guy is going to go okay but first we'll begin with speed oriented pvp heroes the mirage ring is very much in the meta right now so if you have four mirage accessories on your heroes you pretty much have an advantage in pvp especially right now okay but who knows in future we may not need mirage rings so it's very hard to say but for speed oriented heroes you definitely want attack speed rolled on all okay of your accessories and even the exclusive equipment that you are giving this particular speed oriented hero should have attack speed and it should be as high as possible anything else 
doesn't really matter, but skill cooldown I do foresee it being a good subset to have so that your speed oriented heroes can be recycling their skills much faster and doing what they need to do and that is to pull enemies, that is to do a lot of damage. So in light of that, you can also have some attack oriented subsets such as damage dealt, combo chance, crit rate, crit damage. Those are all fine as well. There is no fixed formula for this, Okay, but attack speed is definitely a must. Another type of PvP hero is the debuff oriented one and yes, as you can see I have listed some of the more important accessories you should be giving these debuff oriented heroes especially for Chris he is someone that uses time acceleration very well because you can spam his death skill much more frequently but for someone like Fadina maybe you can go with something like the mirage accessories so it really depends on the hero in this case what kind of debuff oriented hero we are talking about but skill cooldown is definitely one of the better subset to have on these debuff oriented heroes so that they can be recycling their debuffs on the enemy much more frequently attack speed is also great anything else doesn't really matter so if you do roll an attack oriented uh, substat for one of these heroes I guess it works out as well because you know having more attack is never a bad thing but the main goal for these debuff oriented heroes is to have lower skill cooldown so that they can spam their skills more that is the main goal any other thing okay it increasing their survivability with defensive oriented substats is also fine so that they can stay on the field longer and do their job then we have tank pvp heroes and i think without a doubt you definitely want to have defense oriented substats enchanted on your accessories for these tank heroes but it depends then on which accessories we are talking about someone like rudy plus can make use of lethargy accessories indomitable or even the arch priest accessories so now it's not so much about the substat but it's about what kind of accessory you are giving to these tank heroes to make them good and to make them usable and do to do their job in PvP. So immortal accessories, so going with a full indomitable set for for example Rudy, okay, is going to be amazing so that he takes a lot less damage and if you do have defensive oriented substats enchanted on the indomitable set, okay, then that's going to be a very good tanky Rudy for you. So you definitely don't want to have attack oriented substats on the indomitable ring in this case because it will not be at its maximum potential for the intended hero. And then we also have support PvP heroes and there's like Shay, Legend Shay and Karin. I mean Karin is used in both PvE and PvP but in this particular case I'm referring to her in the tank oriented team. And of course for support heroes generally you want them to be spamming their skills to heal and shield more for your heroes. And of course with Legend Shay you want her to be using skills more often because she will heal every time she uses a skill. So skill cooldown is definitely one of the most most important substats for support heroes and of course for the accessories it's kind of the same as the tank ones you, you can even use the lethargy set here okay to disrupt the enemies even more by reducing the ultimate gauge that's one possibility i think time acceleration is definitely a must have for these type of heroes so that they'll be spamming their skills a lot more which is what you need attack speed is great as well because they can then charge their ultimates faster so if you do need to revive anyone okay then um it's there, it's there for you to continuously do your revival and then your team basically won't die. And of course other defense oriented subsets like block rate, block efficiency, ignore defense resistance, combo resistance are all okay, are all decent for heroes of such nature. And of course we have to talk about the PvE side of things as well because this is not the same. For support PvE heroes, of course you want skill cooldown. I mean the substats are the same but the accessories that you use may be different. For PvE support heroes, you definitely want them to have the transcending set as well because every time they attack, they will also be charging their ultimate skill and spamming their ultimate skill is basically the role of Lina and Shay, right? So these subs so attack speed is a great great substat for support PvE heroes unlike the PvP ones which are mainly for revival, right? And then skill cooldown again for sure because you can actually use Lina's movement speed and attack speed buff more regularly, more frequently as well and that will ultimately help your entire team do more damage within that fixed period of time. So for support PvE heroes, skill cooldown, attack speed are great substats to have on the accessories given to them. We also have tank PvE heroes. Of course you have Kate as well, uh, you can use Kate, but the idea is the same whereby you will want to use them uh, with defensive related 
substats and of course the accessories given to them should also complement that whereby you have you know revive rage which is immortality and also indomitable okay to allow them to receive less damage in fact if you compare this slide to the previous slide that we have for pvp tank heroes i've taken out the lethargy accessory i've also taken out the arch priest set okay because these don't really matter in pve at all so yeah, it really depends on where the hero is used and with that purpose in mind, you should then gear them appropriately with the right accessories along with the right substats. We also have debuff oriented PvE heroes and these are the ones that also make good use of time acceleration accessories okay, to actually spam their debuffs to ensure that you are capable of doing your maximum potential damage all the time. So skill cooldown is very important, but the thing about these debuff oriented PvE heroes is that they themselves can act as damage dealers, pretty good damage dealers in fact. So having damage oriented or attack oriented substats on the accessories given to them is also a good thing. You, they can also make use of for example time reversal to remove buffs on the enemy because this is something that you cannot give to your damage dealer itself. But for a support debuff oriented hero or a secondary damage dealer you can afford to give them time reversal accessories they can also use the transcending set if you have okay to allow them to do a bit more damage for you so overall i think you can go with a skill cooldown build okay or also go with a secondary dps build in mind for these particular heroes and then finally of course we have the main damage dealers in your pve team they definitely will want to have full attack oriented substats. In the case of Adele, he may use skill cooldown and time acceleration accessories to allow him to renew his immunity more frequently. That is also one option. But in a general sense, for damage oriented PvE heroes, you will want to have the Destiny set with full damage oriented substats so that you can do the maximum potential damage. In future, when Aces Earrings come out, which is the first one you see right there, that is going to give your damage dealer 15% more attack speed and I think 10% more attack and that is a huge deal to any damage oriented PvE hero and that is one of the accessories that you will want to aim for when it comes out. So lastly, what about exclusive equipments? As I mentioned earlier, exclusive equipments are mainly you know, focused on a certain hero but they can be rotated around to different heroes. So what you really want to do is to make sure that for that particular exclusive equipment that is dedicated for that particular hero, you won't want to have subsets that complement its owner so that you get the most out of it. And then when you rotate it to other heroes for use, you can also then, you know, equip them to the right hero. For example, you may equip a Rudy exclusive equipment that is defense oriented to someone like Greater Adele or Theon or another tank basically to ensure that they get the most out of that exclusive equipment as well. So with that, I've come to the end of this video and I hope it gave you a better idea of what to roll for for certain accessories and who you can equip them to. And if it did, to give a like and subscribe to my channel. Big shout out to my channel members Tom, Jeremy, Chilling, Nick, Flahas, Gonzalo, Yamaki, Kevin and Harlan for their support. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you!